Hi folks, this is Amy the Potter, and I'm getting ready for my class tomorrow. And that means uh, working on stemware this week, goblets and things like that. So I have some of these that I threw off the hump yesterday, and they're nice and perfect for the feet. So I'm gonna put some on tonight, and I'll demo some tomorrow during class. But for now, I'll take you through the whole process, beginning to end, so I can practice for my class tomorrow. So, first I need my tool. Very important. Let's see, where would they be? Oh, here we go. But what about my sponge? Oh no, did I lose the sponge today? I think I might have donated the sponge involuntarily. down. Okay. All right. So here we are. So first we're going to throw the feet for these six cups right there. And let's see. This could be better. And then I'm going to put the feet on these cups. And then I'm gonna, that's it. Make them feet and put them on the cups. <laughs> okay. There we go. I can get kind of wet sometimes. Here. Not with regular throwing, but with this kind of thing. Sometimes my elbows get wet somehow. Okay. So, get the drying this off the bat, and this is here from earlier, but it's actually kind of cool, so I didn't measure that. Okay. So drying off the hump. So the first four here, they were, I think I was thinking of them as apricot size. And I want the feet to be about um, about the same. I want it to feel balanced in the hand so the feet in the top should be about the same. So one thing I learned last time I did this is to make this quite narrow, really, really narrow. Basically as narrow as it gets. And I put a little angle in it like that, just a little. These will get trimmed around. So, okay, so we have that. And now I'm gonna cut it off. I need a pin tool. And I also learned something else. Here, wait, let me find, here's a pin tool. And then I also need, where's all my stuff? Maybe I'll come out here. Okay. Here it is. So another thing I learned last time is that I should have on this while it's here. It's going to help my future self. And then I'll cut it off. Okay. It's good to put it onto a clean surface. So I'm going to get myself ready. My Four of the, like, Mineola, I think is how I was thinking of them. Okay. Just 
just keep it really thick I'm just making the beginning all the way in pretty much little angle and that that's it two more mineolas <laughs> so when I say that it's the size of the mound that I make I lately I've started to think of them as um, different fruits like a cutie, what are they called? Cutie. Okay. Separate that out. Keep it thick, make it even. Maybe help it along a little bit. Bring it in. Angle. Cut it off. bigger ones. Bring it in. Little angle. Score. bigger ones. Those are the size of small apples. Small apple. Even it out. Still make it small. The last one I didn't score. Oh, I got two of these. small apple. I can't remember. Okay, let me make one more small apple just in case. Mm -hmm. I did it again. Just do a little something, something like this.
just got this inspiration out of nowhere to make a perfect circle. I've never tried to do it before, and suddenly I know this is what I want to do. I don't know if this one's going to work, but it was like a download that happened right here in this video. Okay, that's come out pretty far. Round things. <laughs> balls. Play balls. Imagine pool balls made out of clay. <laughs> that actually could be a whole new game. Okay, so let's get this over here. Up. I'll attach them. Two ways now. First is with the hump. <coughs> the chuck, I mean, which I made earlier. So I'll demonstrate that to last week's class, but I made a double decker hump for both sizes of cups. Oh, there goes one.
Okay. Maybe that one's for me. Alright, so here we go. Get it centered. Centering it by just running my finger on the pot right in front of me and I'm making micro adjustments. Okay, when it's at the spot that I think is right, just give it a little firm press down. The rim has to be on the very firm leather hard. It has to be very firm leather hard, not bone dry. Okay, we can use this one. It's not my favorite, but we can use it. Just trim this round. One finger putting some pressure down in the middle, keeping it right where it is. And if it would happen to slip off, I've got a hand on it. I could catch it. Okay, take a look. Looks pretty good. Just kind of integrate the trimming with the rest of the pot. So there isn't a clear separation line from where you trimmed. Okay. Okay. And then, scraper tool, make a disc towards the center, basically. Okay. Feels pretty well attached. Um, I will say that I think the Giffen Grip is a slightly better tool for this job. I'm trying to keep this cleaned up. Okay. And I'll take one of these smaller ones, dip it in water, shake off the water, and lay it right in the center. Now again, I have to get it in the center, so I'm gonna put a finger in front of me and find where it's closest to me. Gently push away, test again, and it looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna press in from the inside and down with my finger, like we did with the bottle next. Mm -hmm. I do this in a few different ways, so I'll just show you this first. So kind of attaching it, and then I'm gonna push down I really want, I have to attach this first. Pretty I'm important. So I'm kind of, in a way, throwing the clay down from here, from about the middle down. And it's a little bit thicker on the rim, so I can do that. I have extra clay there. So I just knocked it off center. I've got to let go and recenter it. I've got to clean my hands, which is why giving grip is a little bit nicer. Slips around on the chucks, unless the chuck is perfect. I never really are. Okay, so slipping around. So here I can do a couple things. See what happened is that this rubbed the lines out. This is also not totally centered right now. So I'll trim that a little bit with this tool. Make it go to the center. You definitely want your chuck to be in the center. <laughs> okay, so now it's like a little bit more grabby. So I'll set it down again very gently, put it where I think is center. Go around, fine tune it by pushing away. Okay, that feels good. Now I found center and I'm gonna give it a little encouragement to stick. Okay. Minimal water on my hands. I don't want to wet this thing down at all. So now I'm going to do one more time, throwing it down into the pot. I'm not moving a ton of clay here. I'm kind of centering it. I'm kind of pushing it down. Okay, so now it moved again. That's called a pain in the butt. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. Fingers are wet. This hand is going to ride on around the valve, but just holding it basically there. It's pretty thick here, I'm gonna just hold it. I'm gonna exhale, speed it up. So here, I'm actually like riding it like a cowgirl. I'm 
This is not a normal demonstration. This is not good. Okay, let's see here. Get it again. I'm gonna switch over to that different grip soon. probably destroying the rim here because I'm giving it so much pressure. Usually it just stays. Okay. I'm going to make a little detail here. Oops. Make a little detail here um, near the joint. This is going terribly. Okay. You stay right where you are. I'm going to try this move again with my scissor fingers. Support it. Support the pot. Try not to put a whole lot of torque going up. And really to not affect the pot below and just make the foot really holding it in place. Okay, so ideally there's a relationship between this width here and the width here. Uh, this has to be at least as wide as the rim. Otherwise it's just unstable, it's not a good pot. Uh, in general, we'll say that in general, because the one I bought today is kind of different, breaks the rule. But it's also a teeny tiny pot with very little mass that you kind of must be careful with. The thing that I bought, unless you're going to be putting down. Okay, so this is a small one, so it makes sense that it's not reaching the foot here. It looks balanced to me. I think that was a good size that I chose. I'm going to get the water out and finish it up with the magic rib. I see a shadow on this pot, I hope you can't see. Okay, that's great. Against all odds. <laughs> There's a little rough ride in there for a second. That shouldn't happen really, don't, don't do that. And I have to dry it just like this um, until the foot is firm. And when it's firm, I can turn it right side up. And if it's gotten warped in any way, um, I can fix it then. So I just kind of twisted it to get it off. I'm not gonna worry about the rim. I'll do one more demo of this bigger size. Fortify my scratches. I don't know why this has since gone off. Oh, it looks like the bat doesn't totally fit. Let's see if I move the bat like that. Yeah, okay, that's the problem. Wouldn't make sense if it chucked in, <laughs> if the chuck was off center. Okay, so that's pretty much centered. This, this one fits the chuck really well. The first one was not the best. Okay, that's part of the game. So trim is flat. I've got a finger on the middle. I've pushed it down. And I'm also thinking about this pressure being more down, more kind of fortifying this stability of this on the chuck. So when I throw the foot on it, it's more inconsequential than it was last time. The, the chuck, the fact of the pot sitting on the chuck. We want that to be kind of invisible. I didn't even notice. So I'm making this the shape that I like, don't think that this doesn't matter because it will haunt you. If you make a shape that's ugly at the bottom, you're going to see it all the time. You really want it to flow. So spend a little time. Better if I had a mirror in front of me because that's the only way to really check this. That's not true. Oh yeah, there's a million ways to check it. Still, a mirror would be best. most upright. I've had some people messaging me asking me about body stuff and uh, it is so important that you feel comfortable at the wheel. There's nothing more important than your comfort. If you are doing pottery in spite of some discomfort in your body, stop it right away. Just make a change, do something differently, do anything differently. Like I just did. I was like, wait a minute. I do not have to go look at it like that. I do not have to check it like that. It's just a bad habit. 
Or it's just a habit. I don't even have to judge it as bad. It's just something I've done and developed a habit. Okay. So, but come on, mirror, simple tool. I even have a glass right in front of me I can look at. Okay. Not that well. Okay, so here we have this again, pushing down, fortifying the connection with the chuck. Okay. Mm -hmm. One of the bigger ones for this. Dip it in the water, shake, 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 get the water off, plop it in the middle. That's a kind of a fast move because you're gonna probably drip, like, you know, threatening to drip. Okay, so center this. Uh-oh, I got it centering this way the cup came off center, so don't do it until you find where center is. Okay, let's press it down, motion, shake it down. Okay. And now, I'm just gonna go, just throw it down. I've got finger inside, kind of making a wall that I can press against. It's very nice. I'm gonna make that detail here. It's just a place where your fingers can sit and it feels really nice. Um, That's where that is. That part's all done. That's nice. Okay. Then the scissor method. Let me get the water out of here. Minimal water. Only some water on your hands. If you can do it without that, that's great too. Just shake it, shake it off. Try not to get any of this wet at all. Okay. So kind of holding it in place with my left hand, throwing with my right. As soon as it starts to come off a little bit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna release what's happening down here. Mm -hmm. Okay, pushing it down. Trying to be inconsequential, not affect the, the pot below where I'm working. So this time I did it a little differently, running my hands on the rim. Just kind of more in the shape I want. Okay. And this. Mm -hmm. Little height. I'm going kind of towards the pointer, I think. Let's see. Oh no, that was a different shape before. So this will be a different shape. So I keep using my fingers to kind of bring this back in. I think I made this one a little bit thinner than is ideal. So it's taking me a little while, I'm taking several, several passes to get this how I want it, but that's okay. It's nice to get it how you want it and don't rush it. Good to ignore things if you can, like that annoying little piece of slip going around the pot. Nice that I was able to ignore it. Okay, fortifying the line I really want. Just really want to love these. So that's where that one's at. That's a good height for that one. So I move my pointer then. And that'll be nice for tomorrow too. Clean, 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 clean hands. Definitely clean hands. This is a time when I break my own rule and I just use a towel and I'll just rinse this towel off. Grab on and gently spin it to get it off. Don't worry about the little stuff that might be happening. Just deal with that later. It won't help to clean it up now. And then check for that relationship between the foot and the body. Like this one could have been a little smaller, I think. Like it's a little wider than it needs to be. 
So that's it, basically. I'm gonna do one more um, of the big ones. I'm gonna actually do a few more, but I'm not gonna talk about them. I'm just gonna do them. This is making a big mess. Should be cleaner than that. That's probably still too wet. This side? Oh, I was going to demo with the Giffen Grip. Okay, that's a good idea. I'll do the next one with the Giffen Grip. Okay. Here's something I didn't say before. I'm not sure if I did it either. But once you get it attached, the next thing to do is the foot. Center the foot, get the foot stable and strong. Try to go a little less wide this time. Put my detail in there. And slip just came right off. That's really nice.
this is so much easier, but you just need to um, really keep it dry. Oops. Worry. I don't have to recenter that ever. It's always centered. Just have to center the foot. And push it down. Throw it down. Center this. Just run my fingers over it and feel for the evenness. Okay, looks just fine. I can be more aggressive with my pulls with the Giffen Grip because it's holding it in place. Very nice. <laughs> a lot more control here. So I have extra clay now. Oh, whoops. And I don't want this to be much wider than that, so my only way to go is either cut it off or throw it high, tall. So this will give me a sense, a couple different kinds of uh, shapes. And then tomorrow I can make my decision when I do most of them. It's nice to do short runs with slight differences and make an aesthetic choice. such a long demo. Look how they are. Okay. Clean, clean hands still. Careful handling of this all. Okay. Two more. I think these are a lot easier and faster. If I were going to do a lot of these right now, I would definitely put my trimming catcher on and I would not be doing it at the wheel. But since I'm working kind of with wet and this at the same time, normally I would just do like if I was going to do 50 of these, I would pile up 50 of these. You can stack them up like a pyramid.
then my splash pan wouldn't be on. Don't be afraid to leave the bottoms kind of thick. It's really nice to have a stable feeling pot. You don't have to be dainty with these. But it's nice when they feel balanced, so not too much. Last one.
curious about what I'm doing? Okay, let me clean all this stuff up. That's the only downside of the Giffen grip. It's, it's not the easiest to clean. And this combination of like water and trimmings is not the best. That's why I really keep it as dry as you can. <laughs> 